Coming up on Kojigo News, the latest on the COVID-19 crisis from federal and provincial politics and more. A surprising departure from Nipissing University. And will Adam Fantilli ever come to the OHL? We'll find out. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Kojiko News. I am Greg Astorbrooks. After a night full of debate, the federal government has passed a new stimulus bill to try to help the millions of Canadians off work and home because of the coronavirus. This bill could inject, hypothetically and realistically, over $110 billion into the economy. But when is the money getting here is the big question. Joining us via Skype from the Home Office is MP Anthony Rhoda. It, it was uh, it was a long uh, debate that went through. Finally, we got it through now, but it, it will help a number of people uh, in the riding. The nice thing about it is $27 billion goes directly to support uh, workers and small businesses or businesses in general. Uh, that is uh, one of the key things that people have been asking for. And there's another $55 billion that will uh, be kept into the economy and uh, allow it to, uh, to roll ahead and uh, hopefully keep some of those jobs going. In the area, the ones who will benefit uh, that uh, were, were usually the group that doesn't get much are contractors, uh, people who are self-employed. What they're looking at is about $500 uh, per uh, week. Uh, and this is to Canadians who will be losing their income due to uh, COVID-19. Uh, and that's something that you could qualify as a stay-at-home uh, person who is taking care of children, uh, taking care of uh, loved ones. This is something that uh, I think will make a big difference uh, to uh, the individual family. One of the other things that uh, has been increased is the increase of the Canada Child Benefit by $300 per child. And uh, that uh, benefit will continue uh, for this benefit year. The wheels of government can often move slowly, even in a crisis. People are wondering what kind of time frame are they looking for? Because mortgages are coming due weekly, bills are coming in all the time. Can you have a better grasp today than you did a couple days ago now that it is legislation? What kind of time frame are we talking about? That's, that's a very good point, and that's, that was one of my concerns as well, because, I mean, it is a big machine, and, and it does take a, a little bit of time to get going. They're looking at April 6th to get everything in place and so that everything starts rolling out, which uh, seems like an eternity if you're sitting there waiting right now. But uh, it is, uh, it is uh, about 10 days away, so I know what they've uh, done as well is uh, reshifted a lot of the uh, civil servants who are working in one area over to others, uh, EI uh, and benefits, to make sure that everything goes as fast as possible. Uh, and uh, no, it's a valid concern, and uh, it's something that I know they're working on. At meanwhile, the provincial government is trying to stem the tide of woe for its taxpayers. Joining us via Skype from his home office is Nipissing MPP Vic Fideli. Well, uh, the finance minister announced a $17 billion package today. Uh, seven billion dollars in uh, health care and support for people and for jobs and ten billion dollars for people and businesses through tax and other deferrals but uh, our government makes it very clear that this is only the uh, a first step but a critical first step so there's quite a long list of specifics that i can chat with you about i want to ask about uh, obviously people want to know if they can you know pay their bills and get funding to pay their bills and people are wondering how long it's going to take to get money from the province since you know they pay taxes on a regular ba uh, basis and those usually you can't wiggle out of so what kind of relief is there specifically the uh, because of the school and the daycare closures there'll be one-time payments of two hundred dollars for every child uh, up to the age of 12 250 dollars uh, if your child is a special needs child uh, with respect to the seniors, they will receive double their gains. That's the guaranteed annual income uh, system um, that uh, will be for low-income seniors for six months. Uh, hydro, there's 50 or 5.6 billion dollars um, in electricity relief that's coming, uh, including, as we announced yesterday, the off-peak rate of 10.1 cents 
for the next 45 days. There is uh, $48 million in social services that will go uh, to uh, the, the DSABs across Ontario for food banks and um, shelters and churches. Uh, with respect to students, they will have six month uh, relief from OSAP uh, loans and interest payments. Uh, from the, to the business community, uh, taxes will be cut by $355 million for 57,000 employers through um, a, uh, a temporary increase of their uh, employee health tax exemption, uh, five months interest and penalty relief on provincially administered taxes, uh, and a deferral to June 30th of the education portion of the property tax. Well, the local uh, health the unit is looking into who was in contact with a COVID-19 positive uniformed member of the West Nipissing OPP detachment. That release came out yesterday. This is an update. A media release came out this morning stating that they learned of the positive test late yesterday morning. Those close contacts have been instructed to self-isolate for 14 days. And of course, we'll more on that story if necessary on Thursday. Meanwhile, a COVID-19 urgent care fund has been set up as the North Bay Regional Health Center Foundation is seeking donations. Financial contributions as well as personal protective equipment is being sought as the facility is preparing for an influx of patients. The hospital foundation is coordinating um, this effort on behalf of the hospital. Um, we're doing two things. We are fundraising for urgent care, for our urgent care fund for COVID uh, response. And we are also appealing to our community partners, uh, industry, and anyone in our community that may have access to or inventory of specific personal protective equipment items. So um, when personal protective equipment items are PPE, we are referring to things like procedure masks, those are the little ear loop masks that go over your ears and cover your mouth and your nose. We're also looking for N95 masks, and those are very specific types of masks, along with protective gloves, hand sanitizer, vented goggles, and face shields. And we're, we are actually looking for very specific items. So um, I would really uh, appreciate our community who may have some of these items to um, get in touch with the foundation. And we've uh, published a website site that actually allows us to coordinate some of those inquiries um, and uh, offers of donations. Have you received any from the community as of, as of yet? Uh, we certainly have. Um, it's been quite a whirlwind of support and uh, we have received um, some very generous uh, gift uh, donations of these items from our community partners, um, from doctor's offices, from industry, from, um, you know, some of our retailers. Uh, so it's, it is our community coming together to make sure that our hospital is prepared for COVID-19. And being that uh, according to the health unit's latest numbers, there are no COVID cases in North Bay as of yet. So this is getting ahead of the curve and being prepared for what may come? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, this very limited gift of time. Um, it's also our scarcest resource. So we need to use it wisely and just make sure that we can do everything that we can to be prepared. A 42-year-old North Bay man is accused of attempted abduction of a child. This happening Tuesday night on Fisher Street, say police. North Bay Police allege the man approached the child who was with an adult female while on Main Street after a brief interaction. The woman and child walked onto Fisher where the accused attempted to grab the child. During the confrontation, the man is alleged to have punched the woman multiple times. The citizens stopped the assault and the accused left the scene. Police say the victims did not require medical attention. Police were called and the accused was arrested later that evening. Stephen William Forbes. 42 years of age, is charged with attempted abduction and assault. He remains in custody, awaiting a bail hearing on Thursday. North Bay got some unwanted publicity in the Toronto Star about another COVID-19 issue. An actor in North Bay of Asian descent shooting a movie in North Bay, The Swan, said he had to deal with racist slurs from a guest at a hotel he had been staying at before his movie shut down because of the virus. Joining us via Skype again from Montreal, is actor Russell Yoon. I was, uh, I was enjoying the beautiful frozen lake uh, in the hotel that I was staying at and um, uh, just enjoying the view and 
when somebody walked up to me, another person staying at the same motel, and, uh, you know, there was a moment uh, of looking out at the lake, and then he goes, it's nice to get away from Toronto, and all those, and all that effing Chinese virus. And I was wearing my sunglasses on, so he didn't, couldn't see that I was Asian. Um, I turned to him, and I took off my sunglasses, and I said, uh, excuse me? And as soon as he saw that I was Asian, he, uh, you know, aggressively uh, said to me, why aren't you wearing an effing mask? Get the effing away from me. You and take uh, and take you and your effing virus back to where you came from. And I said to him, you mean Montreal or something? And, and he goes, uh, stop being so effing smart. Uh, get the effing away from me. I can't believe they let your type of people stay in this place. When you uh, And meanwhile, his, his wife was, like I said to uh, the star, his wife was uh, cowling behind him like I was, you know, the alien from Predator uh, about to spit on her and dissolve her with acid or something. Do you feel any unease going back to North Bay when COVID finally leaves and you can go back to work? No, not at all. I mean, uh, the people at North Bay were just great people. I mean, everybody there was welcoming, uh, very uh, friendly. And like I said, I believe it was just somebody passing through. So, you know, I even went down to the snowmobile races they were having on the uh, on the lake and, and everybody was just so nice and welcoming. So, no, I have no uh, no qualms at all about going to North Bay when this blows over. And this from City Hall, quote, we are a welcoming and inclusive community and the city of North Bay vehemently condemns all forms of racism, unquote that from communications officer for the city, Gord Young. Chamber chat has taken a, well, drastically different tone these days, hasn't it? The office isn't even open right now, but CEO and President Peter Chirico is trying to hold things together for his membership working from home. We met him downtown on Wednesday. We have closed our office uh, as we're deemed non-essential uh, through the announcement by the Premier over the last couple of days. And so we are taking it very seriously. We are all working from home, uh, trying to answer as many questions as we possibly can and provide information to our members um, as to what is going on out there. Uh, certainly through Ontario Chamber of Commerce and the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, we're in constant contact with both the provincial and the federal governments working on this on behalf of business and to try and make some semblance of whatever normal is going to be in the next uh, couple of weeks. I, mean, I think that there's lots more to be done uh, and as we come out of this and that is one of the key messages that we're relaying to our local politicians, to our federal and provincial politicians is that we have to start planning for how we come out of this right now. We have to look at what those stimulus packages are going to be to keep business afloat during this time and then how we actually encourage businesses to grow um, after we come out of this and we will come out of this. But what about businesses that don't come out of it? What about businesses that may shutter forever? Well, there's always that concern and uh, we have to try and do what we can to um, help these businesses, especially with cash flow through this. And we need involvement at a municipal level, uh, especially for our local businesses and our area businesses, that they take into account what is happening out there. Most of the businesses that uh, are deemed non-essential that are closing up, uh, they have zero cash flow rate at this point in time. Well, certainly I want the city to take a look at their extension of their uh, tax payments, water payments, uh, any of the normal day-to-day uh, fees that need to be done, extending those out even further or be prepared to extend those out further. Make sure that the city does pay their bills quicker than normal, uh, accelerate the payments on those to those small businesses that need the cash flow at this time, and we want to make sure that people shop local. In a story that normally, of course things aren't normal, would be topping our newscast, Mike DeGagne is leaving Nipissing University. The Board of Governors of the school announced today that President and Vice Chancellor Dr. Mike DeGagne is stepping down to become the president of Yukon University. DeGagne will remain president at Nipissing until the end of the school year. Of course, that's up in the air as well. June 30th would be the normal date. DeGagne became 
president and vice chancellor of Nipissing back in 2013 and was one of the very first indigenous presidents of a public university. Well, gas prices are down in this area, but of course, they're much lower in southern Ontario and many other locales across the country as usual. Most stations right now selling a liter of gas at about 90 cents per liter. Roads, of course, extremely quiet, so not a lot of people are gassing up because people aren't going anywhere. At least we hope they're not. Many in the workforce, of course, working from home to help flatten the curve of COVID-19. And while we're at Shell on Lakeshore, the pump's very quiet, even though the gas price has dropped. Feels like a bargain here, but again, Southern Ontario prices are considerably cheaper. Many stations in the GTA set around 60 cents a liter, which probably goes back 20 years for a price like that in the province. When we come back, more news. Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you have to keep tabs on everything, but keeping tabs on your mental health during these uncertain times is critically important. And don't be afraid to reach out, especially now. That is the message from the Community Counseling Center in North Bay. We speak with Executive Director Alan McQuarrie, who talks about the difficult task of social distancing. Here's part one of our two-part discussion. Our message is, is that uh, people need to heed and take seriously the public health, health messages that we're getting uh, from uh, our political leaders and especially from our, our health authorities. At the same time, we know that social distancing uh, is, uh, is very difficult to do because we're social creatures. And I, I almost think social distancing is a misnomer. It's, it's, it's more physical distancing that we need to do. But it's, it's all the more important for people to stay connected, especially with the elderly and the vulnerable, and to do so using safe methods, so telephone and uh, FaceTime and those kinds of things. Now, your organization is adapting to the times. Uh, you are implementing uh, video conferencing in turn uh, in place of in-person visits. Is this as effective as face-to-face uh, -face time with clients? We know that the, this disease is impeding our ability to, to reach people. And it, it's very important that, that everyone understands that there's certain populations that are at higher risk as a result of this epidemic. So uh, women who are experiencing violence, for example, uh, they're maybe not able to get out of the home and work as they usually would. And uh, people are confined to their homes. And when there are problems in uh, families, sometimes those can be exacerbated by the stress of being confined in small spaces, with even with family members. So certain populations are at risk. And even though we... All right, we'll have more on that story on Thursday. Break time again. Clark has weather right after this. Weather is brought to you by Canador College. Great things happen here. Welcome back to Coach Go News. I'm Clark Heipel here in Lee Park. I am here for your five day weather forecast brought to you by Canador College. The sun is shining down on this spring Wednesday. Nice sunny skies on this afternoon of March 25th. We're going to have messy precipitation on Thursday before the sun returning on Friday. As you can see behind me, the snow is melting and melting quickly as the snow cover not nearly where it was last year at this time. Let's take a look at the five-day forecast brought to you by Canador College. Heading overnight on this Wednesday night, the clouds move in and there is a chance of mixed precipitation, rain and snow after midnight, low plus one. On Thursday, the 26th of March, we're going to have a high of four with rain and changing over to snow late morning, depending on that temperature. We're going to have a high of four throughout the day and then a cold low of minus eight on Thursday night. Friday, the 27th of March, sunny skies to look forward to, high six above and clouds move in with a low of minus two on Friday night. 
Looking ahead to the weekend now, the last weekend of March, high plus two with chance of rain or snow on Saturday. And that precipitation chance continues on Saturday night, low minus one. Sunday, more the same, but a bit warmer, high plus four, low minus six on Sunday. Turning the page back to the Almanac, you can see that we're going to have regular temperatures into the weekend. High for the normal this time of year, four, and the normal low is minus six. Yesterday we had four and minus five for the high and low. Well, there you have it. There is your five-day weather picture. Do stay tuned as Greg Esterbrooks will have your sports cast right after this very short break. Sports is brought to you by Tag Construction for all your construction needs. Welcome back, everybody. We are 10 days away from the OHL draft, the OHL entry selection. Adam Fantilli is the runaway number one rated player for this year's OHL draft. But will he be interested in playing in the league or in North Bay? Well, those are two very different matters. Word came down last night that he and his brother have committed to the Chicago Steel of the United States Junior Hockey League. Now, it's not etched in stone that they will play there. And for their part, Battalion GM Adam Dennis says when he has news, he will comment further on the situation, maybe who they are going to draft if it's not Fantilli. But again, a lot of uh, unknowns out there. And again, a reporter for the Hockey News tweeted on this day that Fantilli's parents have told the battalion that they would consider reporting here, but after one year playing in the States with his brother, until he was playing in the GTHL, but left for a prep school so he could be on the same team as his, as his older brother. We'll keep the situation, of course, front of mind for you when it comes to the sports cast. And again, that is it for this edition of Kojiko News on this Wednesday. Please join us for all the COVID-19 updates and how local businesses are being impacted. That will be one of our major focuses on Thursday's newscast, but this is the sign off for Wednesday's newscast. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you with more Kojigo news five o'clock on Thursday. See you then.